As with all the genres we've looked at so far, the action genre is complex, it's interesting, and exploring it in detail helps illuminate all the other genres. Now, to begin with, I think it's accurate to say that the action genre film is the most profitable of all the genres. Not only that, but action genre movies are typically the most expensive to produce, so they really are lucky to be the most profitable. It also means that they're the most financially risky, and so they involve these large-scale sequences with lots of moving parts that require stunt actors who put themselves in personal danger. There's all kinds of insurance costs, buildings being destroyed, vehicles wrecked, and so forth. And what is so interesting about that is that even in today's era of special effects technology, actors like Tom Cruise will strap themselves to the sides of airplanes and do other incredible stunts that create these unforgettable scenes in order to draw large audiences around the world. They're not even using the full capabilities of special effects technology because something about the action genre enables us to have this immediacy if it's real or as real as possible. So it's a very fascinating genre in that regard in that it will actually still endanger people and have quote unquote real action. Now, in terms of some of the tools that we've been talking about, such as the outer form as a genre framework, in the action genre, things can get tricky. After all, action characterizes all of cinema. Since the beginning of history, if a movie has movement in it, then it's pretty safe to say that the movie has action. Now, of course, we're not talking about a short film like Fog, for example, where just this small bit of action as we watch the fog rolling over a field makes it fit in the action genre, even though that fog moving is part of that film's message. We're talking about something more than that. The movement of fog across a screen is not it doesn't get you qualified in the action genre. For our purposes, we want to talk about the action genre as a phenomenon, and just to put some definition on it, a phenomenon that emerges in the 1980s during a time when globalization carried mass media around the world. And it's not just that a kind of genre period, picture appeared during this period filled with all kinds of spectacles that we'd never seen before. We'd had action movies, for sure, but we're seeing action from around the world suddenly being seen by a wide variety of audiences in ways that we'd never really experienced before because a kind of theater emerges and much better ways of uh, distributing and exhibiting the films emerges. And not only that, but the ability to produce movies, shoot them in multiple locations around the world also appears. So you get this characteristic of seeing multiple scenes in multiple countries and that the actual ability to put that together in short periods of time emerges. So action becomes a real genre of its own regard with some characteristics we'll be talking about in the period of the 80s. In addition, when we look at some of the films from this period, we get really interesting issues that appear, such as male conflict and the expression of male identity that wasn't really so strongly profiled in this way without action. So we're talking about muscles and sweat that appears in a really interesting way in this period that wasn't evident before. And my purpose isn't to turn this into a study of gender, but it really is impossible to properly study the action genre without noticing how so many of the films, particularly in that period of the 80s, focuses on the actions of men. Action films tend to focus on the ability of a man, typically a middle class man, to establish his identity through physical activity. That's a lot of what this genre is about, is the establishment of identity through physical activity with a focus on what the body can do. Now this relates to the empowerment that we saw in the crime genre, like for example with Paul Kersey in Death Wish, and it's really, really interesting. But when we make this comparison, we see that someone like Paul Kersey, really, he's just like shooting his enemies, and he's not really engaged in action. There's no substantial physical activity on his part, and it's not really identifying, uh, developing his identity or developing his character. But in action films, by contrast, we experience these intense fantasies of omnipotence and power that are directly linked with the movements and the capabilities of the body. And when we have women featured as the heroes, we tend to experience their femininity as if it had these male characteristics of male omnipotent power. And so in this way, the omnipotent body is a character that becomes capable of escaping 
the normal boundaries and the capabilities of the human body. And in some ways, it'll even be that male body takes on female characteristics. So there's a kind of fusion of gender and there's often a femininity that comes out that's quite odd and paradoxical. There's an, uh, another level of paradox that emerges when we look at action movies and what they accomplish because the action movie genre is the ultimate form of escapism. But it's a kind of escapism that uses physical activity and violence that tries to solve certain problems posed by capitalism. It rivets us with this excitement that seems to help our minds escape the suffering that we have in our body by exerting godlike feats of strength and athleticism, but at the same time, it seems to be a very, very conservative genre. And some scholars have even argued that the action genre closely resembles the agendas of government administrations that were in power or are in power during the period of release. So, for example, the look of the heroes during the Reagan administration focused on larger men like Schwarzenegger and Stallone, whereas arguably during the Bush administrations, the most popular action heroes were leaner and tended towards more intellectual solutions in combination with some physical feats, of course. So I'm thinking of Harrison Ford and Tom Cruise as being very different than the popularity of Schwarzenegger and Stallone during the Reagan administration. This is a very interesting argument. And as we get into the genre of action deeper, we're going to look at more core elements of the action genre with movie examples, looking at special effects, the role of parody, irony, and self-reflexivity. But before we carry on and get into the action genre any deeper, please take a moment to post your thoughts in our discussion and use the following guide uh, to help with your response. How would you, right now, before going any further, define the action genre? What are your, some of your favorite action films from this action genre and why? Why do you feel that they count as action films? And what would you say are the key features of action genre movies that you've seen? And I think more importantly than any of this are what are the specific pleasures that you feel when you watch an action movie? So we've talked already about crime and we've talked a little bit about Western and we've talked about science fiction. Those all have specific pleasures, but what are the specific pleasures that you feel when you watch action movies? I really look forward to reading your comments and engaging with you in our discussion area.